Today on Handy Dad TV, part five of my master bath remodel project. Today we're going to be talking about the walls, which includes sheetrock out here and this fancy 45 degree angle, as well as the green board inside the bathroom. I'm going to cover the curb with Duroc and do a skim coat, and then I'm going to show you how I red guard the entire shower to waterproof it. Let's get to it. Let me start by saying I am no expert at sheetrock, and I'm sure there are much better instructional videos out on YouTube, but I just wanted to show you the progress and the way that I actually go about it. I suck at nailing, so I prefer to use a screw gun. I invested in this a long time ago. It's a, a real professional Makita drywall screw gun, and uh, it works great. This tool is a Roto Zip by Craftsman. I think I did it in. The sound of it you could hear is just so awful. It sounds like a dentist drill. I apologize for people who are frightened by that sound. But the dust just, it creates such horrible dust. You could see it's going right into my bedroom. And oi, I hope my wife doesn't see this. I wound up throwing it away after this project was done. It was shot. Green board is what I'm using inside the bathroom, and of course, green board is moisture resistant, which you need in a very humid area. Outside is just normal sheetrock, and I'm using half inch throughout. There's two types of tape. This is a fiberglass tape for joints. I usually use the paper tape, but uh, in this case, I was using the fiberglass elsewhere, so I said, eh, I'll just keep using it. Now I gotta say, neatness does not count where sheetrock is concerned. You can really mess it up and fix anything with joint compound. It covers a multitude of sins. You can see that big joint behind me in the corner. I didn't cut that correctly and uh, you know, I just filled it with multiple coats of joint compound and fiberglass tape and it, like I said, it just, it disappeared. Nobody would ever know that it was that bad. Now this is the trick for that 45 degree corner. You can't use normal corner bead. So I got this flexible tape corner bead. It's got two, I think they're aluminum strips in it. It may be steel, I'm not really sure. But it's embedded in a paper tape. And the first thing I do is cut it to length and then bend it to the angle that I want. And it really could work with any angle, not just 45 degrees. Then put on a, a simple layer of mud to begin with. And put the crease tape right into it, embed it in. Then smooth it out and cover it over with more mud. Now I will say it's not really a hard corner when I'm done, but it looks nice and you know, as long as I don't bang into it, it should be okay. But even a metal corner, if you bang into it, it's still gonna dent. Anyway, it was my first time using this product and I thought it was pretty cool. After the first coat dries, I just use a bigger taping knife. This time it's a six inch taping knife. Last time it was four inch. And I scrape off any high spots and then put on a second coat. And that's what it comes down to. You just do successive coats with a bigger taping knife. And here I'm starting a third coat, this time with a, an 8 inch taping knife. I think for the final, final coat, I'll actually get as big up to 12, but I don't know if I go that big on this one. 
I like to keep the light at a low angle and that helps me see any high spots that I might have missed. And I don't actually show the detail of the sanding. That's all there is to it. Just keep doing multiple coats until you're happy with it. Now inside the bathroom, this is the curb. Now I follow Star Tile's methodology for doing a curb. You can see I'm wrapping it here with Duroc. The shower pan liner covers the curb, but yes, I know I am driving screws through the shower pan liner at this point, which some people say is a no-no. But I'm going to red guard the shower, and the whole thing is going to be waterproofed anyway. I'll put some links in the video description to videos of Star Tile that really help me uh, figure out how to do this, and, and uh, his methodology just seemed to make the most sense to me. I'm just using a level here to make sure that it's not negatively pitched. I'll make sure that there's a positive pitch when I actually put the curb top on it. Now I don't show the detail about the step behind it, but I do that the same way. I'm using a grinder here to ease off the rough edges. I didn't uh, cut the Duroc with a blade. I actually just did it the usual way where I scored it with a knife and snapped it. So the, the edges were rough and I just wanted to smooth them out before I did my skim coat on them. This of course created a ton of dust in the bedroom too. Here I'm putting a skim coat of Thinset on all the Duroc surfaces. And what that does is, first of all, it's filling the voids in between the two surfaces, like uh, the top versus the side. And that way it'll be nice and tight together. It's also filling all the screw heads that I put through the Duroc. And this will make a nice solid surface for me to put the red guard on later. Neatness doesn't count. This isn't going to be seen. I just want to make it as smooth as possible. Now you may ask, why didn't I use Duroc throughout the whole shower? And Again, watch Star Tile. Um, it's his methodology. He doesn't use Duroc that much throughout the shower. He says it's not needed. Once you put the red guard on, first of all, Duroc is, is porous. It's concrete. And um, if you were to use Duroc, you would still have to use red guards. So it's harder to work with. It's heavier and it's more expensive. So it's really not needed. And the green board, once it's covered with Red Guard, is just as waterproof as any third-party product out there, whether you're talking about Schluter or Weedy. And you may have noticed that I'm not using any kind of joint tape between the Duroc and the green board there. And the reason for that is that the Red Guard acts as a crack preventer. So that's what joint tape really is. So you really don't need it. You don't need both. One other thing you'll notice is that the green board is held above the floor of the shower. I poured the shower pan before I put the green board up. The reason for that, you should never put your walls into the mud of the shower pan because the shower pan, if there are, if the water ever penetrates through the shower floor, through the tile, I should say, it may saturate the, the concrete. And if your sheetrock touches that concrete, it could wick up into the sheetrock and then into your studs and cause mold and rot and it, just a mess. So holding it up like this prevents water from ever seeping up into the sheetrock. rock. 
Again, if you're unsure about it, I'm not here to tell you exactly how to do it. There are plenty of sources on the internet that that uh, go through how to waterproof a shower. Like I said, you could use third-party products like Weedy or Schluter, or you can use RedGuard like this. Make your own decision that, that you're comfortable with. Now I'm using that same fiberglass tape that I used on the sheetrock to do this seam in between the uh, sheets on the floor. The next day I just used a dry putty knife to knock off the high spots. Again, wasn't going to be visible, I just wanted to make sure that it was nice and smooth for me to put my red guard on. The red guard is a liquid rubber. It goes on pink, but it dries dark red. So it's really easy to see where you've done and when it's dry. Now I'm going to wind up putting probably two coats on the entire shower and three or four in the corners and on the floor. The shower floor got a bunch of coats as well. I basically used up the whole gallon. I just kept on going and putting successive coats on until I ran out. Goes on really easy just like paint using a disposable brush and a disposable roller. And I even painted the red guard into that corner so that the, um, the concrete, the mortar of the uh, bed is actually sealed against the shower pan liner. And I tried my best to get up underneath the, the sheetrock as well. So between the red guard and the shower pan liner, this shower is never going to leak. Red guard gets applied to the walls with a thin napped roller. There's no way to clean the roller when you're done, so just make sure you get a cheap one and throw it away. And I didn't have to go all the way to the ceiling either. I'm only worried about, you know, water getting behind tile and anything above the shower head really isn't going to get wet. After the walls were done, I then turned and put the rest of it on the floor, and I just kept putting it on until it was gone. I also did about six inches in front of the curb. That's just what uh, Bob Doyle likes to do. He recommends it. You don't have to do the whole floor because if you think about it, it winds up, if water gets underneath there, you know, there's not much it's going to do. It's going to go under your baseboard, etc. But just in case there's any incidental water that might come over the curb, just from drips getting out of the shower, it's protected there. And so here you can see, this is just an after shot. Just the next day, all the red guard is dry. And it's so easy to tell that you've got complete coverage. It's a stark color. I think I put three or four coats inside the niches as well. And I did at least two coats on the wall. Anything that looks white in this close-up is just reflection. I Trust me when I tell you I covered this whole thing extremely well. I globbed it in the corners there. Globbed it. And I also took care to paint it really close up underneath the drain there too. So even if water gets through the tile, it's going to hit the red guard and it's not going to go anywhere other than down the drain. All right, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and look for episode six coming up. Visit my website, handydad.tv, for more great ideas and information. 
be sure to subscribe to be the first to know when new videos are posted.